Hello, hello, and welcome back to another video here on the channel. My name is Riley, and in today's video, we're doing something a little bit different. We are doing a rebuild of sorts. We are going to be with wolves, and this is just a one-off video. I'm only doing one video of this specifically, but we're starting in the early preseason, so like June, July area of 2022, and we're going to go through the transfer window. We're going to... To make some adjustments because as you may or may not know currently looking at the EPL table wolves are terrible they are in dead well not because of goal difference they're not dead last they're not 20th but they're 19th they're tied with Nottingham Forest at the bottom of the table and as lots of people would have thought wolves should not be this low they have great quality but obviously they're struggling so we're going to go through maybe some reasons why they're struggling, uh, looking at guys that left, the guys that came in, and we're going to make some adjustments. And then we're going to go through the January transfer window and then see how we end up at the end of the day. So first things first, let's take a look at uh, our finances just to see what we have going on here. So overall balance of 8.4, not great. And it looks like projection wise, we're going to be going downhill a little bit. Uh, transfer budget, it looks like we are currently underspending our wage budget, just by a little bit though. The original wage budget, 3.9. Next season will be about 34, so eh, it's nothing too crazy. Not a lot of money to spend there. Transfers out, 42 and a half million pounds out the door. This young man here, uh, he was a, a pretty good squad player for them. By pretty good, I mean like he was you know, a squad player <laughs> for Wolves. Midfielder, defensive midfielder, all that jazz. Morgan Gibbs-White, another player that left at 22 years old. Uh, he's been in and out of Wolves for a while, just like with loans to Sheffield United and Swansea. And he never actually put up a full season at Wolves. So it's not a substantial loss, but still, it's uh, a young player that born and raised, if you will, at the club, so... Definitely still a loss nonetheless. Who else did they lose here? Connor Cody off to on loan to uh Everton. I I rate I rate uh Connor Cody quite a bit. I think he's a good player, good leader for uh this team. And losing him to Everton, even though he's out on loan, I think is substantial. I I don't know. I, I think it is at least. And honestly, it's just a lot of other loans that have gone out. Uh Nothing crazy. Fabio Silva, he's a good player, but he is still young. And I, I wouldn't say it's a huge loss, but it is it is a loss nonetheless. So players that came in. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Matias Nunez, a midfielder in the middle of the field. He comes from sporting. Honestly, I'm, I'm not opposed to this deal. 39 million pounds from a sporting player. Obviously, we know... The link between Wolves and Portugal is strong. Signing Portuguese players is a huge, huge, important, it's a very important aspect of uh, the Wolves transfer business. And bringing in someone like Mateos Nunes from Sporting is good. 39 could be seen as quite a bit for a player like uh, Nunes. But uh, yeah, I don't know. He's played in at Sporting for a while. And we know that Sporting does provide good players. So... So, like, I, I get it. And there's a bunch of free players there I'm not going to touch on necessarily. Nathan Collins, he comes in from Burnley. And again, eh, eh. eh I, don't, I, don't, I don't think he's a, a great replacement for Connor Cody necessarily. But at 21 years old, he's an Irish international. So, that's that's pretty good, I guess. Gaty's here. Comes from Valencia. And I, I, I do rate him. I think he is a, a good player, a good winger. And he can... Use them all over the pitch, really, uh, when in the attacking areas. So I think that's a, a good bit of business. Uh, other players, who else did they actually bring in here and spend some money on? Uh, I'm not going to be able to pronounce this name, but he comes from Austria. Sasa Kalazic, something like that. Where is his other nationality? Serbian. There we go. That's what I figured. But, yeah, he comes from the Bundesliga from uh, Stuttgart. For 15 and a half million pounds so yeah it's fine i think wolves did 
do a bunch of business. They brought in a lot of players, but it's not like they really spent a lot. Well, they did spend a lot of money, 104 million pounds. But, I don't know. They didn't bring in anyone of substance, if you know what I mean. There definitely seems to be a lack of excitement here. Especially for a team that is always in the, just outside the, around the top 10 area of the EPL. Like, obviously, Wolves, near the end of last season, had a chance to get into Europa League, but weren't quite up to the task. So, disappointing there. And then not really doing a whole lot in the transfer window. And, like, like they didn't really lose a lot of players, necessarily. Like, Diago Jota left the year before to Liverpool. Overall, their transfer window what is disappointing. So, just doing a quick little looky-loo here at who the squad is made up of and what areas could be improved. Back in net, they have... Jose Sa, Jose Sa, 29-year-old Portuguese player. He was in Greece prior. He's only been here for two seasons, so this will be his second season. Comes from Greece, Porto before that, and then lower leagues of Portugal. He's not a great option, especially for the Premier League. Like He's not bad necessarily, but yeah, not awesome as well. He has no caps for Portugal. He's under 21, so... And his backup is, uh, yeah, even worse, to be honest. <laughs> Montenegrin player. So, yeah, not not the best. Left back, I, Johnny is, uh, Johnny. I know that's not how you say it, but I, I, I rate him. Uh, obviously, he's had some injury issues in the past seasons here. But he, he is a good player. 28-year-old, uh, he's got three caps for Spain. And he can be used on the left or right as a fullback. So I think that is awesome. They have decent depth with 21-year-old Ryan Aitnuri, uh, French left back. So honestly, not the worst when it comes to depth. Center back, this is where losing uh, what's-his-face, Connor Cody, is significant because the other players that you have are newcomer Nathan Collins at 21 years old who honestly is not someone that I would be wanting to be my starting center back in the Premier League. It's one thing using him as a squad player, which he is listed as, but using him every single week is a little eh, not awesome. Same with Max Killam, honestly. He is a good squad player, but not someone that you just want to be in your squad throughout every single game. So... Yeah, not not uh, not awesome, if you ask me. Right back is an area of strength for Wolves, though, with Nelson Semedo. Uh, I, I definitely rate him. 28-year-old Portuguese player, and yeah, no, no complaints there. And then looking at the midfield, midfield's actually not an area that I despise. Again, depth is an issue. Ruben Neves, we all know him. I've been thinking that United should sign him for the longest time, needing that defensive midfielder. And he's still here at Wolves. Makes you wonder why, but he is still here. And I think he's a good player. 25 years old, 30 caps for Portugal at this point. The issue is, behind him, there's not a whole lot of quality. Like a player like João Montino, he is 35 years old at this point. 146 caps. Like He is not a young in. Honestly, he probably should be moved on at this point. When is his contract up? At the end of the season. Yeah, like he really probably should be headed headed out the door. But it, it's hard. It's hard to justify when he's been with the club for so long. He's probably considered a club legend. Um, well, he's only been here for five seasons. So maybe he's not actually. But he is a fan favorite. You do know that. Because he's a Portuguese fan favorite. So. Yeah, and we already looked at Nunez, 23-year-old. It's not the worst signing, but yeah, not the best as well. Babacar Traore, 20-year-old. He is on loan from Mets, from League 1. Yeah. Depth, looking at this more in more detail, depth is definitely an issue. It's def definitely something that is lacking here. Uh, we got Gates again, good player. Nunez. Has potential, Gian Motino, sure. Uh, this young Austrian, young as in 24, Sasa Kaladzic, 
Kala, Kala Yazic, something like that. But then you get players like Pedro Neto. He's more of a winger, which we are aware of, but he can play there as well. So looking on the left side, uh, yeah, not a lot of options. A lot of squad players, and I think that's the biggest thing with this uh, club. A lot of squad players, not a lot of important or honestly star players, or players that could be star players. Daniel Potence, 26-year-old Portuguese. Honestly, he, he's not terrible. I, I do like that his dribbling and first touch are so good. He's got good pace, good athletic. He's very athletic, honestly. But at 26 years old, three-star potential, French player could still prove, eh. When's his contract up in two years? So it's like, is he going to do a whole lot more? I don't know. Do I think? I yeah, I, I really don't know. Adama Traore, we all know who he is. He is like one of the fastest guys on this game. And yeah, he, he's a good player. He's a good player. His contract is up at the end of the season. Uh, last season, he was on loan at Barcelona. Not that that did them any good. But I think having him back in the squad here in Wolves would or should help. Someone that's this athletic and his dribbling is that good, like you kind of have to utilize him. But outside of that, there's not a lot, like I said, there's not a lot of quality, not a lot of guys that I'm like, oh yeah, he is awesome. Like this 26 year old Korean man, like 10 to 12 million pounds, like once his contract up, man, he's, been, he's got a lot going on. But yeah, not, not a player that excites me. Pedro Neto, uh, same kind of deal someone that i would try to sell at this point like he's got some decent qualities but eh, i don't know you probably cash in on him that's kind of my thinking at least yeah i just don't their business is lacking depth that is pretty much where what i'm coming down to striker is definitely an area that they could get some improvements yemenes raul been here a little while 33 and a half million he came from benfica and at 31 years old he's just gonna go downhill like his pace is only at 14 right now especially for a pressing forward or advance forward that's not like terrific speed and honestly like looking at his finishing his first touch is dribbling it's just not there he should not be the number one striker for this team he shouldn't be your number nine same with diego costa like i know he's in the squad but honestly he probably shouldn't be and outside of that, there is not a whole lot of options. Leonardo Campana, he's from Ecuador, on loan from Inter Milan, Inter Miami, sorry, all the way from David Beckham's area. And yeah, honestly, it's eh. there's just a lot of that eh. Like improvements need to be made, but <clears throat> with the time frame and the money that's here, there's not a lot of options. Honestly, these guys need to be sold. These guys need to move on, and areas that could be improved probably a striker and probably a center back those would be my two priorities if i had to pick two at this point so i don't know let's see let's see what i can do i'm going to try to do some business try to sell some guys and try to get some more money and then go in on a few cheaper options maybe maybe i don't know because this is also a problem lots of debt transfer debt is also significant at 51 million so not awesome yeah, we'll see what we can do. So stay tuned. So we've gone through the transfer window is not done yet because obviously this is 2022. The season ends or begins early because of the World Cup. But we have caught up to the beginning of the season. So we are at Leeds. The season's about to start. So we'll just do a quick review of what we've done, which honestly is not a whole lot because there's not a lot of money to do anything with. So players that we have brought out, kicked out, left what what's the wording there i don't know uh let's see let's see let's see honestly the only guys that i've been able to sell so far are daniel potence for seven and a half million and yersin mascara for 4.6 mascara is it's whatever uh potence was actually a player that was half decent i did not do that great i probably shouldn't have sold them honestly probably not the best move for me but eh, it was it is what it is so, Otsin Edward is uh, someone that I did bring in. I was a fan of his at Celtic. Uh, his time at Crystal Palace is whatever, but I think he would be a good addition on uh, Wolves. And he was only, how much? 15 million pounds. So, not bad, not bad business. 
and I think he will do better. Uh, historically, he's been really good on FM, so hopefully he continues to go up. And it was a cheap signing for a area that was definitely in need. Uh, other players that I'm bringing in, honestly, the only other one is uh, Gonzalo Inacio. He is a 20-year-old wonder kid from Portugal, of course, from Sporting. So not only is he young, high potential, but he's also Portuguese. And he fits a need of being a center back. So I think that would be a good signing. It's uh, The amount of money to sign him is substantial, 30 4.5 and it's uh gonna put us in a little bit of debt but it is what it is so i'm going to play through now until the end of the transfer window which is probably after brighton's my guess so we'll see how we do i hope it works out for us but we shall see so stay tuned many months later oh we are back into the future and it has not gone very well for me i had no money so i was i just just played on right through the transfer window closed it came it closed no one else came in no one else left not a lot of players i just didn't have, have enough players that were willing to go or like that were wanted and i couldn't afford to bring guys in so that was an issue and as you can see we have struggled struggled so much that i did not even make it to the january transfer window i got sacked so, uh, what to say, what to say. If we want to look at, uh, currently Wolves are sitting at 20th, which is better than where they're sitting right now, but the difference is, this is 17 games in. 17 games in, and they're at 20th. In real life, they're at 12 games in, and they have 9 points at sitting at 19th. Uh, sorry, what did I just say? Not 20th. They have 20 points. So they have 11 more points in real life than they do in this game, and they have five more games. So like, thankfully, in real life, they could get to this point, but it's 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 not good. So what what could I have done differently? I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You, you tell me, what would you have done differently? If you were managing Wolves, what would you have done in order to avoid this disaster? And like 14th is not bad. They finished 10th in real life, not the end of the world. But in real life, they are doing so, so poor. Obviously, I couldn't save them. I got stacked. Their expectations were too crazy for me, I guess. But eh. Unfortunately, this rebuild has been unsuccessful. I could fast forward, like skip ahead and see what would happen by the end of the season, see if they get relegated. But I'm not going to do that because. They can deal with it. They, they sacked me. I don't care what happens to them. But I think this was a, a cool little experiment to see if I could make them look better than they are in real life. And clearly, I could not. They gave me no leeway whatsoever. So let me know what you think. Leave a comment. Leave a like. Subscribe to the channel. I'm going to do one of these kind of videos again. <clears throat> let me know what club you think I should do. Just like a one-off rebuild kind of idea. And uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. But thank you, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.